marie mcguire is special assistant on problems of the elderly housing and urban urban development with the federal government mrs mcguire how long and how did you happen to be come interested in this field well if I say it was before the war, that sounds like another era, doesn't it? But actually it was in 1941, just before World War II, that I became interested in the, in the problem of community growth and uh, of low-income people in particular. Uh, this led me to return to school, uh, go to the University of Texas and take a school of architecture to be a little more knowledgeable about uh, how we were going to bring about communities during a war period, which was very imminent. I think we all knew it, sensed it. Uh, with the dislocation and relocation of so many family groups and yet have a good environment for children while fathers and mothers were, were uh, involved in war housing, I mean in war, war industry. And so this study led me to, to the low rent housing field. And of course, in this field of housing, automatically we come into contact with many older people because so many of our older people are in fact in the poverty sector. Yes, now we, uh, we seem to have also a general growing interest uh, in the aging problem in the older citizen. Do you have any ideas to why this is happening? Oh, it, it's not only growing, it's growing so massively that we have a whole new profession right here with us today that, that didn't exist uh, 10 years ago, even so long, uh, short a time ago, it's 10 years. Uh, it's growing, I think, primarily in response to the fa fact that the population itself is growing so rapidly. That is, in the older age groups, this is due primarily to uh, good medical science and research. We know how better to take care of ourselves today, and we've found the answer to some of the great killers of the past. And so, with this, uh, this uh, growing uh, number of older people, some 18 million today, expected to be about 30 million, people over 65 years of age by the time we reach 1972 or 3, I think the forecast is. Uh, with this coming on, they're beginning to re the older people are beginning to represent a bigger and bigger gro group in our society. This has caused us to stop, think a little bit, and say, uh, all right, what about this? Do people retire to rocking chairs and to uselessness and to loneliness and abandonment by the rest of society? Or do we uh, put our good uh, thoughts together and see what is the role of the older person and how we develop responsive uh, answers from the general society to their needs? Well, in many attempts to uh, develop responsive uh, programs, there have been a number of programs that have developed. Now, is this sanctioning uh, separation uh, from the families or sanctioning uh, lack of family responsibility or does this in, uh, involve something more? Oh, no, not at all. I don't think we have any basis whatsoever to indicate or to say with any validity uh, that sons and daughters love their parents less or that there's less feeling of responsibility for one's older, older members of one's family. Indeed, it's quite the shoes on the other foot. Uh, it's the older people themselves who want so to live that they don't have to be dependent on their children. Uh, that in short, uh, mother doesn't want to sit by the hearth of her daughter as her role in life, uh, particularly since she has 15, 20, or maybe 30 years uh, after she's a great grandmother to, to live a long while. And she wants a definite and he wants a definite role in society for himself, a fulfilling role, a creative one, a one for different opportunity and different excitement, retraining, re-education, all the alive, vivid, lively things of life rather than, than the retirement into loneliness, despair, and perhaps dependence on one's family. What has really happened is that the community now is taking up the role and fulfilling the, the spaces in life that the family once did when it was a normal thing to have older or several generations living under one roof. The house was big enough. There was a role for the older person, not just babysitting, which is certainly not fulfilling for anyone as a full-time person. So the community organizations, the churches, the recreation groups, the volunteer groups of all kinds, in addition to government, all of these are by coming together now uh, to develop significant, enriching, and fulfilling roles for older people, and society generally, of course, will be the beneficiary. Well, since there are not the uh, family units that have either under the same roof or within, you know, down the street a couple of houses, the entire uh, span of the generations. Uh, are we replacing this with housing units that, uh, that house 
uh, only given to sectors of the population. In other words, uh, separate units for the elderly, uh, which are apart from the other community. Is this good, or do you have any comments to make about this? Yes, I do, because it's a matter of great concern to many people that uh, as the price sometimes of good housing within the paying ability of older people, we put a, a, a group of people together, all of one age, let's say a group from 65 to 85 or, or 65 up, and many people are troubled that this removal, a seeming removal of older people from the general population is a very bad thing, not only for the older person as a matter of identity and so on and for his own self-esteem and status in society, but also it removes them from, from their effect, their good effect on younger people. Well, uh, I can't agree with this in relation to your question, which has to do with housing design, housing types. First, we start with the fact that all people are, have diverse interests. Older people certainly have diverse interests and tastes and desires. We should build enough housing and enough variety to respond to each person's desire. But if, uh, if you are putting people, let us say, in a high-rise apartment building, and you're putting families next to older people, and older people just under where family lives, overhead, and so on, it becomes a very chaotic and uh, awful situation for the older person, for instance. Uh, the older person may now, now that he has the leisure, may want to sleep until 9 o'clock every morning, but he has to wake up and get up at 6 because that's when the baby cries next door. Mm -hmm. Or he likes to go to bed early, or she does, and the teenager is dancing until 2 in the morning. Well, it seems to me if there's anything we 